Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 5th of December. Amit Shah moves bills related to Jammu and Kashmir, says can't have two prime ministers. India-US relations proved against political volatility, says Jay Shankar. And Nepal urges Russia not to recruit its citizens into army, says Sikh Skill. And now for all the details. On the second day of the Parliament's winter session on Tuesday, India's Home Minister Amit Shah moved two bills related to Jammu and Kashmir. The proposed bills seek to amend the JNK Reservation Act 2004 and the JNK Reorganization Act 2019. They provide reservations in state government post and education sector for certain categories and reorganization of the erstwhile state into union territories. During discussions on the bills, Shah said, how can a country have two prime ministers, two constitutions and two flags? Those who did this, they did wrong. PM Modi corrected it. He further said, we have been saying since 1950 that there should be one prime minister, one flag and one constitution and we did it. वो गलत है जिन्होंने भी ये करा था उन्होंने गलत किया था नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने इसको सुधारने का काम किया है आपकी सहमति ना सहमति से क्या होता है पूरा देश चाहता था और ये चुनावी नारा नहीं है हम 1950 से कह रहे थे एक देश में एक निशान एक विधान और एक प्रधान होना चाहिए दो नहीं चलेंगे और हमने कर भी दिया The JNK Reorganization Act was passed in 2019 after the abrogation of Article 370. The amendment bill to the legislation proposes to increase the number of seats in the JNK Legislative Assembly from 83 to 90. It also proposes to nominate one member from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir displaced in conflicts with Pakistan. Heavy rain submerged roads in southern India where at least nine people, including a child, were killed in flooding and havoc as severe cyclone Mijong made landfall in India's Andhra Pradesh on Tuesday. Parts of the state along with neighbouring Tamil Nadu were lashed by heavy torrential rains which the weather office has said will reach the 200mm mark in next 24 hours. The rains and winds snapped power lines, uprooted trees and hindered rail and air connectivity in both the southern states. In Tamil Nadu's capital Chennai, which is a major electronics and manufacturing hub, flooding had also disrupted operations in the Indian facility of Foxconn and Pegatron that makes Apple iPhones. Authorities were on high alert and warned residents not to venture out unless necessary. And amid the Panan row, India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar on Monday said that there is a structural soundness in the India-US relationship and it is proved against political check. His remarks came as a Washington court has indicted an Indian national in the foil plot to kill Khalistani terrorist Gurpantwan Singh Panun. Speaking during a global technology summit in New Delhi, Jay Shankar stressed that both the countries had managed their ties over the past two decades. His comments were echoed by America's principal deputy national security advisor, Jonathan Finner, who was in the same event. Early in the day, Finner separately met Jay Shankar and India's NSA Ajit Doval in the first publicly announced engagement between the two sides after Washington's allegations. India has formed a high-level committee to probe the charges by the US. Now, if a relationship can actually uh, prosper uh, with five very different presidents. I would suggest to you that the data clearly indicates uh, a certain uh, sort of uh, uh, stability and a certain, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a, uh, enough investment on both sides in, in there's a certain structural uh, soundness uh, to this relationship. So I don't 
Meanwhile, speaking on ties with Russia, Jay Shankar said that India has a 60-year engagement with Russia and it is not correct to interpret as if there is some handicap or over-dependence. India sees Russia as a long-standing and time-tested friend and it has remained its top arms supplier and amid the Ukraine war, Russia has also emerged as New Delhi's top import destination for crude oil. Moving on, protests have erupted across Gilgit, Baltistan against the Chilas bus attack, raising concern over safety of citizens and attempts to create unrest in the region. A report. Locals and activists in Gilgit, Baltistan staged demonstrations across Gilgit, Baltistan on Monday to denounce the Chilas bus attack, in which at least nine people were killed by unknown gunmen this past Saturday. The protesters raised concerns over the safety of common citizens and asked the government to foil attempts to create unrest in the region and bring perpetrators to justice. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack. However, the region has been marred by sectarian violence for past several decades. The incident is reminiscent of a similar attack in 2012 when gunmen had dragged nine Shia Muslims off a bus in Chilas and shot them dead. Chilas is also near a China-backed dam under construction. Locals have long accused Pakistan and China of atrocities and indiscriminately exploiting natural resources with no regard to their rights. Sri Lanka recorded a total of 1,51,496 international tourists in November, the highest number of monthly visitors in 2023 so far, according to the latest data released by the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority. This is the first time that the number of tourists to the South Asian country passed the 1,50,000 mark in a month after December 2019, when the deadly COVID-19 pandemic hit the world. Sri Lanka's cumulative tourist arrivals for the first 11 months of the year stand at 1.27 million. About 20% of the total number of tourists came from India, with other key markets including Russia, Germany, Britain, Australia, China, the United States and France. Tourism is one of Sri Lanka's top foreign revenue generators. The government last month also waived visa fees for nationals from countries including Russia, China, India, Malaysia and Japan to boost tourism in the coming season. Nepal on Monday said it has asked Moscow not to recruit its <coughs> citizens into the Russian army and immediately send back any Nepali soldiers working there back to the Himalayan nation after revealing six of its citizens serving Russia's military had been killed. In a statement, Nepal's foreign ministry said the government has urged Russian authorities to immediately repatriate the dead bodies and pay compensation to the families of the slain Nepali nationals. Nepali soldiers called Gurkhas are known for their fighting skills and have been serving the British and Indian armies following an agreement between the three countries. There is no such agreement between Russia or any other countries, prompting Kathmandu to urge its citizens not to join the army of any war-torn country. The Indian Space Research Organization on Tuesday informed that it has successfully returned the Chandrayaan-3 propulsion module initially intended for lunar operations to Earth's orbit after surpassing its lunar mission objectives. This marks another achievement following the lunar hop by the Vikram lander, showcasing the capability of reigniting engines on the moon and controlling equipment operations that ISRO had not initially planned. The primary objective of Chandrayaan-3 was to demonstrate a soft landing near lunar south polar region. According to ISRO, the mission objectives have been completely met. The initial plan was to operate this payload for about three months during the mission life of propulsion module. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.